1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, we find Paul writing to the church at Corinth and he says, for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? The apex of God's wisdom is the redemptive story fulfilled by the Son of the living God. The great wisdom of God was hidden but has now been revealed. That's what the Apostle Paul has been laboring to unpack for these first 11 chapters in the book of Romans. Jesus is the prophet greater than Moses. Jesus is the priest greater than Melchizedek. Jesus is the king greater than David. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Jesus is the brightness of God's glory. He is the expressed image of the Father. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the hope of the nations. This is not the wisdom of some seminary or the wisdom of some denomination. This is the wisdom of God that has been unpacked throughout Romans chapters 1 through 11. Ephesians 3.10 says, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. John MacArthur writes, quote, God's wisdom is his perfect knowledge of how to act skillfully so that he will accomplish all his good pleasure to glorify himself, end quote. Not only the wisdom of God, but look at the scripture here. In verse 33, oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. Consider the knowledge of God. A.W. Pink says, God's knowledge of the future is as complete as is his knowledge of the past and the present. And that because the future depends entirely upon himself. End quote. There is never a moment, not even a brief second that passes where God lacks perfect knowledge. He has perfect knowledge because God is in control of all things. He's in charge of all things. He is in control of the future. That's why this false idea, by the way, when you're studying the sovereignty of God and salvation, that God just looks through the tunnel of time to see what Jim will do, whatever Jim is out here today, whatever Jim will do, and then based upon what Jim does, then God responds and does his electing. That is not the story of salvation. God is in control of everything. He not only knows the future, seeing it, possessing full knowledge of it, without any cloud that might prevent him from seeing everything as it is but he is in control of how things work out. He lays out this plan with precision, but his knowledge involves his saving knowledge. Yes, he knows everything. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows everything that you need before you even pray and ask for it. He has complete knowledge of his creation. He knows the size of the universe. It's estimated to be at 93 billion light years in diameter, containing stars and planets and human life and animal life and plant life. With great precision, God has ordered everything to the point that if Earth were just a fraction closer to the sun, we would be scorched. If we were a fraction farther away from the sun, we would freeze. And all of the laws of nature God has established in such a way that we breathe, that we eat, that we are supplied with water, and so on and so forth. All of this is under God's complete genius and His knowledge. And yet, 
They estimate that the universe contains some 100 billion to 200 billion galaxies. And here we are in just one of those galaxies, the Milky Way. And all of his creation is so vast. Even as you just think about this one little planet, planet Earth, you consider the fact that there are some 30,000 different species of fish. You think about the fact that the smallest in the West Pacific Ocean is one centimeter in length. And the largest is the whale shark that can span upwards of 50 feet. It's amazing when you consider the vastness of God's knowledge and his genius and his capacity, not only to know all things. I read an article recently where when they went down to the depth of the Challenger Deep in the submarine that they were finding fish and certain types of fish that they had never seen before. And yet God knows them. God has created them. He knows about the ostrich. He knows about the bee hummingbird. He knows about all things. He is before all things. He is the creator of all things. He is the sustainer of all things. Heaven, earth, clouds, rain, snow, ice, bees, bears, locusts, lions, slaves, and kings. He knows it all. He knows about events, wars, and rumors of wars, elections. He knows about thrones and kingdoms. He knows about the invisible world, the angelic beings, the demonic beings, Satan, that ancient dragon. He knows it all. But yet with all of this considered, the knowledge that's being spoken of here in this doxology as Paul looks back and as he is overwhelmed with it all, it's about the saving knowledge of God for his people. That's the context. God knows his people. That's why in John 10, 27, we find these words, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. You see, God has not forgotten his people. And if you just look at the the context of this passage, you will see that Paul is answering those very questions and those objections. Would God forget his covenant with Israel? Would God forget his people? And the answer is obvious, no. God has not forgotten his people. God has not forgotten the Jews. God has not forgotten his covenant. God has not forgotten the church, both Jew and Gentile. This is a statement regarding the saving knowledge of God's love for his people. Could we with ink the oceans fill and were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the oceans dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. This is the love of God. Consider the greatness of God's judgments. We read on. How unsearchable are his judgments. This is a statement that's not in reference to God's wrath. This is a statement related to God's decision to save his people. Why is it that God chooses to save his people? Why is it that God chooses to Love Jacob and hate Esau. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. God's judgments, His his decisions, God's decisions involve the future, the things that have yet to be revealed to us, the present, what's happening even in this room. God sees all things. The eyes of the Lord, according to Proverbs 15, verse 3, are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good, because God is eternal. Psalm 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God's knowledge is perfect and whole and complete, and it's vast. 
beyond measure. And unlike God, we lack the ability to understand these judgments. Why God would choose to do something. Sometimes we experience how God would do certain things and it catches us off guard. But He is determined to do certain things. And whatever God determines to do, it will indeed come to pass. God's decisions are sovereign decisions. But not only his decisions, consider the next phrase, how inscrutable his ways. The, the word judgments is in reference to God's decisions and his ways are his actions that bring about those decisions that accomplish what he has determined to come to pass. This is the path that God moves in his creation to accomplish his ultimate glory. And who would dare question that? Psalm 99 verse one, the Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. Why would God allow a hurricane to smash into the coastline of Florida, destroying homes and taking lives?